Good morning. We're a little slim here this morning, and a little bit of a reason why is that we are having our church picnic after church today. And so there are several people who are uh, working on that right now, and luckily they can watch the replay. Uh, so that's a wonderful thing that we have here. So they are not missing worship, they're just getting prepared for our, our, our um, Christmas, or Christmas, our picnic after, after church today. So welcome to Salem, Salem's hybrid worship service today. We are worshiping online and we are worshiping in person as well together. I am Pastor Amy Barsh Odal and I am so happy that you are here today. This worship service is being recorded as I mentioned and will be available on Salem's YouTube channel after worship. So if you're watching the replay, I welcome you as well. Um, if you are a visitor, we welcome you to Salem. We ask you to sign our guest book out in the entryway and to reach out to the ushers if you have any questions today. If you need more information about Salem, please go to our website at SalemLutheranGlendale.org. SalemLutheranGlendale.org. And we've got a lot of quick announcements tonight, today, so I just want to make them very quick. Today is All Saints Sunday. As you can see, we have um, some people have brought pictures of the saints that they are remembering today. We know that um, there is a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, and that is why we are here today. Someone told us about their faith and shared it with us. And then we now are also saints called to share our faith with other people. And in the future, there will, the people we tell will tell others. So from generation to generation, we share our faith. We are all saints, both the ones that have come before us, the ones that are now here, all together today, here and here, and all that will come after us. So we, will, we uh, celebrate All Saints Day today. Um, church picnic is after worship. Go on to the court, into the courtyard and down in, by the gym, and you will have, what are we going to have? Hamburgers and beyond burgers and lots of other picnic foods. Okay, everyone is invited. Everyone is invited. So please come. Um, the visioning team is continuing to work. So uh, please watch the e news or the the website to let us know. These are the people who are on the visioning team right now that are working with us to look at what is Salem's new mission for the future. So after pandemic, where are we going? We know we have the mission of the school, but what other things that, that can we do out in the world and share God's love with other people? And what ways can we do that? So we're, we're studying that right now. Um, let's see, game night this Friday, game night. This is my visual for game night, okay? No one in my house likes to play this game with me anymore because I always win, right, Maggie? Yeah, my, my no, my daughter says it's because it takes too long, right? Nobody likes it because it takes too long. So if somebody wants to come on Friday at 6 o'clock and play this game with me, I would love it. Or you can bring your own favorite game like Uno or whatever else you like to play. Um, finally, Advent Bible Study is called Light of the World. Light of the World. We are going to have three opportunities for this. I'm encouraging everyone to be in a Bible study for Advent. Um, it will be on Thursday mornings at 11. My dad and I will be doing it on Zoom. He's in Minnesota. I'm here. And so we've been doing the, these online Zoom Bible studies for almost three years now. Um, so join us at the 11 o'clock, our time, California time, um, Bible study for Light of the World. If you want to come in the evening at 7 o'clock on Zoom, I will be leading it alone because it gets a little bit too late in Minnesota for my dad. And then um, after church on Sundays, we're going to be having time at 11, 15, 11, 30. We will have an abbreviated study if you want to stay after church on Sundays. That will only be in person. All right. So that is our Bible study, Light of the World. Great one. If you're not in a Bible study right now, I really encourage you to do that. All right. I'm going to take a breath now and we have a guest announcement. So I'm going to invite Phil Allen to come on forward and to. <laughs> All right. You can come up here to the pulpit. And he's, from, he's going to give us an announcement about New City Parish. So let's see what he has to say. And you can talk out, but you will be on the camera as well, just so you're aware. Well, thank you, Pastor Amy, for, first of all, agreeing to allow New City Parish to have its 30th annual banquet this coming Saturday, uh, starting at 5. Salem has, set, has such a history with New City Parish. Uh, when uh, my wife, Pastor Allen, who I, she lets me call her Pastor Allen, uh, was here, I learned about New City Parish and became involved then. And it is just fascinating to be back and see folks that uh, were here 30 years ago that uh, only look days, I guess decades older, uh, <laughs> than, uh, than we were back at that time. So this coming Saturday, we're having our banquet. Uh, it's in your bulletin. Uh, I am very grateful to do it on All Saints 
Sunday, and also I noticed you have a generosity campaign. And that is something that Salem has been known for in the New City Parish churches. Uh, for those that don't know, New City Parish is originally five churches that were formed at the time of the civil unrest in 1992. There are now nine churches together in Inglewood, Compton, and Los Angeles. And Salem has been a partner throughout those years. So we want to thank you on behalf of the board, on behalf of the churches and the members of those churches for your willingness to participate with us, to provide support, and to be people of God with us as we move forward working and worshiping in the city. Thank you very much. So I will be attending next week as well. And um, a little, no, little known fact is that uh, the, one of the churches that I was uh, at in Minnesota was also involved with New City Parish. So we would have the, one of the youth groups would come in the summertime from, from California, which was very exotic to come to Minnesota. And we get to meet some of the kids from the, the, um, the churches in, in Los Angeles. So uh, just a little bit of a connection there as well. All right, today is, we are in the second of four weeks of our worship series based on generosity. It's specifically called our money story. We all have a money story, whether we recognize it or not. Perhaps we're, we are living from a story of fear or shame, or a story that the church is dying and no longer relevant, or a story that our actions won't have any impact, or a story that we just don't have enough. Where might God be speaking a new narrative into the limited ones that we have told ourselves? This theme invites us to discover and tell money stories in light of God's money story of liberation and justice. This series encourages us to transform our generosity practices into more full expressions of who we are and what we believe. This theme is intentionally direct. It invites us to name exactly what we are talking about and not skirt around it. To speak of money is to invite tension into the room. We so quickly want to avoid talking about money, but it is time that we reframe this. Money and possessions are one of the most common topics in scripture, and Jesus talked about money more than faith and prayer. Our money story is a spiritual story. Thinking about God's money story should be liberating. It should be inviting, and it should be transforming. This generosity season, we invite you to remember, to release, to remain, and to restore your money stories so that all of us can write the one that God is begging us to live into. Again, today's concept or our theme for the concept is release. So you will hear that in our liturgy and in my message today. Let us begin worship as we stand up together. And we remember that here at Salem, there is no person or created thing outside of the active love and grace of God made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through Moses, God said, let my people go. In scripture, the law declares, in the seventh year, you must cancel all debts. With grace, Jesus said, give one coat away. With honesty, Jesus taught, sell what you have, give that money to the poor. Faith has always involved letting go setting free, releasing, dropping our nets, giving to others, and following. So in this hour of worship, may we release that which binds us. May we worship with open, untamed, and porous hearts, so that we can walk freely with God. Let it be so. Amen. Let's sing.
You may be seated. One of my announcements that I forgot is that we do have All Saints Remem Sunday Remembrance cards. If you haven't picked one up, you can grab one um, from the entryway at any time during worship and fill this out with saints that you would like remembered. Um, actually, Jim Peach has them right there. Um, if you'd like to write down names and then give them back to the usher at any time during worship. What does it say here? The ushers will come forward to collect them as the sermon is beginning, okay? So if you'd like to fill any of these out with names of people that you'd like remembered, we will be reading these names during communion, okay? So let us pray. Gracious God, together, we release our hearts to you. First, we remove the pressure, for release requires the freedom to be moved. Then we allow our hearts to return to their original resting position. In sync with you, with the rhythm of summer cicadas, and this whole wild creation, then we pray that you will find our hearts available, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. So like the mockingbird releases her song, we release our hearts to you. Move in them, stir us awake, speak to us now, we are waiting. Amen. The first reading is from Deuteronomy. Every seventh year, you should grant a remission of debts, and this is the manner of the remission. Every creditor shall remit the claim that is held against a neighbor, not exacting of a neighbor who is a member of the community, because the Lord's remission has been proclaimed. Of a foreigner, you may exact it, but you must remit your claim on whatever any member of your community owes you. There will, however, be no one in need among you, because the Lord is sure to bless you in the land that the Lord your God has given you as a possession to occupy. If only you, you will obey the Lord your God by diligently observing this entire commandment that I command you today. When the Lord your God has blessed you, as he promised you, you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. You will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community in any of your towns within the land that your Lord your God has given you. Do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards your needy neighbor. You should rather open your hand, willingly lending enough to meet the need, whatever it may be. Be careful that you do not entertain a mean thought thinking the seventh year, the year of remission is near, and therefore view your needy neighbor with hostility and give nothing. Your neighbor might cry to the Lord against you and you would infer guilt. Give liberally and be ungrudging when you do so. For on this account, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake, since there will never cease to be some in need on earth. I therefore command you, open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land. The word of the Lord. Now, normally we would have a children's sermon, but I only see Louisa here today. So I mentioned to Louisa that the children's sermon is a good one. So I'm going to save it for next week. <laughs> um, and so I mentioned to her that in my treasure chest, I do have something for her after worship so she can come up and pick something out from the treasure chest, all right? Instead, we're going to ask you to stand as we read today's gospel. The gospel according to St. Matthew, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. And you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother also. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all these. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go and sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I may have forgotten to put this on. Oops. 
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and his son Jesus, who is the Christ. Oh, I thought I had my sermon up here too, and it's not here. What's this see here? Okay. Here we go. The Old Testament scripture is from Deuteronomy and is the understanding of the year of canceled debts. I want to highlight a few words that stood out to me when I heard it. I want to see if you heard this when you were listening to the passage to see if these words stood out to you. You shall grant a remission of debts. Do not be hard-hearted to, to tight, do not be hard-hearted to tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor. That's hard to say. <laughs> Open your hand. Freely lend what is needed. Give liberally and ungrudging, ungrudgingly. Open your hand to the poor and the needy neighbor. I think it's pretty, pretty straightforward that God is commanding. These are not suggestions. If we actually read it in the Hebrew, these are imperatives. They are commands. They are not optional. So to sum it up, God commands us to be generous, to share, to seek out those who are in need, to open our hands and to give generously to release those riches, those riches that we have, and to be generous, to share how simple and yet how hard. There was a little boy who was playing on the beach and he and his parents were walking along the beach and they were looking at the waves coming in and out. And all of a sudden they saw the most amazing shell just kind of floating and bobbing in the water. And they told the boy, run out and get it. And so he ran out, looked at it and ran back. And they encouraged him, no, 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 go back out and get the shell. So he ran back out, and then he ran back in. And he did this like three or four times. And they, they said to him, they said, um, why aren't you grabbing the shell? If you don't grab it soon, it's going to be gone. And he held up his hands. And he said, my hands are so full, I can't grab it. His hands were so full of other shells that he couldn't grab the prized shell. All he had to do was release his hands in order to grab the shell. Turning to Matthew's gospel, the grieving rich man. For many, this is a familiar story. We've heard Jesus tell the rich man, sell your possessions and give to the poor. And we know the man goes away grieving because he had so many possessions. The rich man said he obeyed all of the commandments that Jesus listed. Did you notice which seven commandments those were? All of them had to do with relationships to human beings, right? Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't gossip, honor your parents, love your neighbor. The first three commandments, which Jesus didn't mention, are the three that deal with our relationship with God. Those three are the ones that the rich man couldn't obey. None of us can be in a right relationship with God. We cannot love God with our whole heart if we keep our possessions, our money, to ourselves. Loving God means that we use our money in ways that help God. We open our hands to the poor and the needy neighbor. Here's a story that you might have heard before. It's about a South American village where they were having trouble with the monkeys getting into their food. So they decided they were going to have to trap the monkeys and then move them to another village <laughs> or to somewhere else, okay? So the trap consisted of a coconut, right? They burrowed a hole in each side of the coconut, they emptied it out, and they put a piece of food inside the coconut, and then they also put a string. So they tied, they were able to tie the coconut to a tree, okay? So when the monkey comes along, he sees this coconut treasure, and he slides his hand inside, and he grabs the food, and then he can't get his hand back out of the hole, right? He won't let go of his treasure and the coconut won't let go of his fist. He tries and he tries and he tries, but he cannot get freed from this trap. And the, the, the villagers are able to pick up the monkeys or whatever they do, take the monkeys and move them on to a different village or to a different place so that they won't come back and steal their food. The irony is that if the monkey would only let go of the snack, his hand could come back out of the coconut. If he loosened his fist and let go of what was inside, his hand would slide back through that hole, but he won't do it. He won't let go, so he's trapped. If only he would release the food, he would be free. So God is telling us today 
that we too can be trapped when we hold on too tightly to our stuff, to our money, and to our expectations. Too often we have the expectation that money is the only security we need and that we need to hold on to it so tightly because we have this fear of scarcity. It is human nature to protect our stuff, our possessions. But that is actually a form of idolatry when our stuff and our, and our money becomes our God. It becomes more important to us than our God. Today, God wants us to release those fears, to release our bondage to our possessions and our money, and to share. So let me back up just one moment so that there isn't any misunderstanding. God does have a different economy than what we gravitate toward. Remember how I always say in a lot of my sermons, Jesus came and turned the world upside down and inside out? Well, that's what he's doing with this passage. God isn't asking us to, to sell everything we own, but God does want us to live generously, not selfishly. God wants us to acknowledge the needs of other people and to help when we are able. God wants us to be responsible for ourselves and to help others who are in need. God wants us to open our hands and be generous. If you are sitting here today or if you are online today thinking, shoo, I'm glad Jesus didn't command everyone to sell all their stuff, then maybe you actually are too attached to the things you have already. Think about that for a moment. Our worship series is called Our Money Story, and today's word is release. A definition of release is to relieve from something that confines burdens, or oppressives. When it comes to money, many of us long to release shame or fear or past harm. Maybe we need to release what is holding us back from trusting in God wholeheartedly. We all have a money story. God has a money story and tells it over and over throughout scripture. God's money story is that God wants us to release our bondage to our stuff to open our hands and share. I think I've said this a lot of times, you should remember, open your hands and share, right? God's money story is one of grace and abundance and generosity. You have homework this week. You have homework this week as well online. It's to think about your own money story. Number one, who helped you learn about the value of money and your financial behavior? Who helped you learn about money and your own financial behaviors? Number two, who helped shape your giving practices? Who helped shape you to be generous? And number three, how has scripture inspired your generosity? How has scripture in inspired your own generosity? Those are keys to ask you to begin thinking about your own money story. I believe some of these saints that are before us were ones that probably helped shape our own generosity. I want you to consider when you are filling out your pledge card for this year, this generosity campaign and think about your generosity in other areas of your life as well because we god wants us to to give to the church god wants us to give to other areas of that are in need so it's not just the church but we are asking right now in this time for you to think about and prayerfully consider your generosity with the pledge card which um dave weller is going to talk about in a few minutes so let's pray the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds on christ jesus amen Let's stand and sing.
it doesn't sound good. Okay. Let us confess our, confess our faith or affirm our faith using the words on the screen. Together we say, we believe that on the first day, God released love and creativity over a void. And that void became mountains and rivers, sunsets and starry nights. We believe God laid down with death and was released from its grip, knowing suffering and freeing us from this fragile life. And we believe God invites us day in and day out to release our fears, let go of assumptions, tear down walls, throw open the doors, and walk closer to love. May it be so. Amen. Prayer to the people. Everlasting God, bless Salem Church for the continued. Bless Salem Church that it continue to dream dreams, sing new songs, and be a sign of your living presence in the world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God grant peace to our world, our neighborhoods, and our homes. Help us to share your peace with everyone. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We lift before you, God, the people and places that need your healing and extra care. Those who may name out loud now and those who name in our hearts. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We give thanks to you for all the volunteers from Salem that truly became your hands and feet in this world. Help them to continue to serve and lead in your name. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. And today we repeat this week's sixth grade prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for Ukraine, Armenia, and Russia. We ask that you may help our church to grow so more people may follow you and love you. Help us to spread the word of Jesus. Please help the homeless get food, water, and shelter. Help us to keep the economy safe. Thank you for healing Bianca's dad's cough. Pray for Arlie's grandma's knee and for Alex's grandma's hip surgery. Pray that bullying can come to an end and for our school can gain new students. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. We ask all of this, you, O God, knowing that you are our hope and our salvation, a very present help in times of trouble and the one whose purpose is to grant a new and abundant life to us and our world. Praise be to your name. Amen. Now it's time for us to share God's peace. We are going to do this in sign language. We'll do it twice. The first time we'll do it together, and then I'll ask you to turn to your neighbor and share peace with them as well. So we go, peace be with you and also with you. And then please turn to your neighbor. Peace be with you and also with you. You may be seated. At this moment in our worship service, we focus on our financial offering and generosity. When you feel ready to support our ministry of spreading God's love in the world, please use the Banco Faith app on your phone. Go to our website at salemlutheranglendale.org. You may leave an offering in the plate, which is in the narthex, the entryway or you may mail a check to Salem Lutheran Church and School. Everything that you give, your time, your talents, and your financial treasures matter. They are appreciated. Thank you. All right. This year for the 2023 pledge. Twenty twenty three pledge. That's better. Uh, now that I got to all of your attention, <laughs> uh, this year's theme is our money store. And I've been asked to share just a few words to explain. And we do this every year. And we want to make sure we get your attention and everybody just pays attention for a moment because this is really important, Salem, in terms of why we use them. So there's two aspects to the pledge, really: budget planning and listening. And that's listening to God for how to share the gifts that we have been blessed with. Listening to God and to how to share the gifts that we've been blessed with. So the annual pledge is a prayerful gift of thought. It should be purposeful planning. Think about what I should give back to Salem's mission and to this church in general. It, it really shouldn't be arbitrary 
putting a little bit, would you come when you think of it, when you get around to it? It really should be not as you go, but God asking us to discern what it means to all of us individually. The second part has to do with the for leadership to do planning. And that's something I have been connected to in the past. And that helps us plan everything for next year. It's not a contract. Sometimes we've heard people get fearful of completing it because they didn't have a check. It's just to give us an idea of what is going to be coming in so they can plan for all the mission that we do here at Salem. Think of it as a roadmap and for a way to put our active thoughts together on how to go forward. So there's three ways that you can do that. Three ways. Um, there's an electronic pledge card, which will come with an email that goes out to all of us. You can click on that. I think it's a Google thing and you fill out what you want to do. There's the QR codes. This is the cool thing. If you right now you put your phone up to that, or I'm sure it'll be on the email also, and you click on the little yellow button that's kind of moving around, it takes you right to the site. Right. And then third is the old fashioned way. Um, you can fill it out by paper. Jim and the ushers in the back will have these. You can take one with you or fill it out today. And keep in mind, there's two parts. There is the annual fund we talked about. Then every two years we do one for the building fund. So you're really same thing. Sit and think what moves you. How much do you want to allocate to both either? We have two different ones this year because the building fund is every two years. So really what I want to just ask you is to join me in listening, listening to God, listening to our hearts and have a purposeful strategy, a purposeful strategy for returning just a portion of all we have been blessed with by God. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, together we're going to do this one, Barb, I think. Okay. Holy God, it is not always easy to give what we have. We count pennies. We weigh the pros and cons. We calculate what we have given before, and we remind ourselves what we are giving to now. We all have our money stories. And yet, even though it can take work for us to practice release, we trust that you can take these gifts, however freely or reluctantly given, and use them to build a more beautiful world. For that is who you are. You are forever building castles out of sand, disciples out of people, and new life out of cautious gifts. We believe, help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now we have a special offering of music by Michael Bridges.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we admit to holding tight to that which we know and understand. We put you in a box to avoid the shades of gray that come with faith. We put worship in a box to avoid the discomfort of shame, change. We put ourselves in boxes labeled with gender expectations and societal norms. We put others in boxes labeled worthy and unworthy. We put all that we have in a box and pray we won't run out. So in this moment, we confess to holding tight to fear, greed, and worldly structures. Forgive us for missing the point. Open our eyes to a new way, to a new holiness found in open boxes, unclenched fists, shades of gray, and holy release. Gratefully we pray. Amen. O oh God, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you on earth, who now rest from their labors, especially those that, from our congregation who have passed away this year. Edna Frenette, Gloria Majofsky, Isabel Mendez, Bonnie Millard, Patrick Perry, Russ Randall, and Eleanor Ramsa. Keep us in union with all your saints and bring us with them to the joyous feast of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, we have the invitation to the table. If you are online, I ask you to please get your elements ready. The dinner table is always a place where we tell stories. We tell stories about growing up and falling in love and making mistakes and figuring it out. We tell stories that make us laugh, stories that make us cry, and stories that help us to remember. This table is no different. For at this table, we tell stories about a God who loves us unconditionally. We tell stories about a man who fed the hungry, washed the feet of his disciples, and said, this is my body for you. So friends, as you come to this table, bring your stories, stories about who you are and who you want to be, stories of shame and disappointment, stories of fear and faith. Bring your money stories, your faith stories, your love and heartbreak stories. Bring them all, for no matter the narrative, God welcomes us to this table. You belong here. There is a seat saved for you. If you are on Zoom, I ask you to please hold up the elements as I am doing, and I will ask you to wait to consume them until after the Lord's Prayer, and Hans will use the words of, will um, give you the words to use, okay? If you are in person, there will be two stations. The ushers will dismiss you by row. If you prefer to have a communion kit, you can pick up the communion kit and go back to your seat. If you prefer to have us give you the, the communion elements, then you come to us, okay? And um, we, you will hold out your hands and we will give you a regular wafer or a gluten-free wafer, and then you will consume it. And the person with the wine will give you the wine and we ask that you drink it and then put your cups in the baskets that are on the sides. Again, I'm giving all of these instructions because it's been a long time since we've done this in person, and so we are still remembering how to do everything, and we're also working a little bit with how, how we do things uh, in, in new times, okay? So together, for the words of institution, please hold up your bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of his disciples, saying, take, in, take this cup as the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. As we prepare to eat together as your disciples did, we remember and we speak that truth out loud, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. At this time, I ask the ushers to, to come forward and my assi communion assistants to come forward as well. And at this time, I want to invite you all to hold up your bread. And I tell you, this is the body of Christ given for you. Now for the wine. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Remembering our great cloud of witnesses, Raymond Dunn Jr., Joseph Kastrova, Michael Salvatore Kastrova, Pastor Edward Bush, Jim, Jimmy Mangalerti, Opal Polaro, Carl Polaro, Elton Rangstorff, Marie Rierich. Audrey and Joseph Fakelli, Baccarelli, Victor Longberger, Anna Longberger, Pearl Landfell, Rebecca Revia, Jesse Revia, Robert and Christine Close, Frank Close, Peter and Charlotte Eady, Carl Eady, Alpha and Donald Walker, Alice and Charles Evil, Mary Anita and Carol Evil, Mike Barkley, Lynn Grayley Steele, Gloria Castello Ramirez, Bob Steele, Tom Grayley Sr., John Papp, Blaine Spites, Mary Stimler, Martha Lundy, Edgar Soto, Evialisian Doher, Obanesian Carl. Vanessian Mono. Richard Hamilton. Richard. Albert, Albert and Olive Luring. Dwayne Luring. Eleanor Ramsa. Gary Unger. Joy Caselli. Ray Oatley. Walt Johnson. Ann Johnson. Richard Watson. Lewis Watson. Alice Watson. Bud and Marcia Gregson. Cora Sill, Fred Sill, Aunt Mary Knuckledy, Uncle Fred Knuckledy, Reverend Swenson. Carl and Norma Krieger. Juanita Camillo, Olivia Guadalupe. Frank and Pat Peach, Bill and Jenny Steger. Nelly Rose, Pat David, Dorothy Nixon, Evie Melcher, Clark and Margie Paddock, Jean and Tom Denton, Steve Anderson, Christopher Oliver, Isabel Arcia, Elmer and Marion Cruz, Lowell and Bernice Jones, Paul Johnson, 
Tim Johnson, Joel Nelson, Mary Bassler, Betsy Henderson, Marianne Lund, Baby Noah, Michael Thorson, Rita Formica, Eva and John Margin, Eva Borrego, Maria Lascala, Greg Schoenquirk, Charles E. Odal, Jane Arch, John Johnson, Walker Johnson, Agnes Harrier, Leslie Harrier, Herman Dash, Elsie Dash, Melvin Harrier, Lydia and Jose Gilin, Magni Jarl Kios, Benedict Kios, Ruth Ludwig, Jackie Moore, Diana McDonald, Lee Spar, Elaine Monty, Ivan Brownstein, Mark Borchers, Jackie Moore, Nikki Stanley's mom, Todd Adler, Leslie Simons, Bertha Overschlepp, Magdalena Wood, Genevieve Shermer, Ronald Shermer, Julie Shermer, Ellen Reed, Paul Salomonovich, Please stand. Holy God, as we leave this table, help us to remember this moment. Help us remember that with you, all are invited. Help us remember that with you, there is a seat for everyone. Help us remember that with you, there is enough food to go around, that even Judas was invited to the meal, and that there was manna in the wilderness. Help us to remember so that as we go, we can build tables like this in the world. We need more tables like this in the world. Gratefully we pray, amen. Let us sing hymn number 426. Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget we've got a great picnic happening right after worship and game night on Friday. Go in peace to walk in love.